Uh, so let us begin with one minute silence. This is the important area of our life, sleep, that we're going to learn about. So let's clear our mind so that we can grasp today's topic and uh, make some important changes in our lives. Because it's evening here and you know we have gone through the day and there are a lot of things in our mind. So let us just be quiet in awareness of presence. Thank you and welcome again. Uh, so let me first, uh, before I, uh, before we jump into this uh, uh, learning, uh, I want to know from all of you, what is it, what questions you have regarding sleep? And if I am going to unmute everyone so you can state, and uh, then I will state what my purpose is regarding what I want to say. And then we'll try to include everything, whatever you want to know so that it becomes uh, that you're not just here for a lecture. You get answers of what you really wanted to. So let me unmute and you can very quickly go ahead and unmute yourself and let me know what is it that you wanted to know. Uh, yes. Hello. Hi. Um, uh, I'm Parivna, uh, and my question is: um, uh, how how can we get uh, sound sleep such that we wake up well rested? Sound. And uh, and uh, coming up with a routine such that we en we enable this um, uh, good bedtime sort of routine. Um, Okay, how we can have the sound sleep while having, doing our routine daily work. Doing, that, and uh, how to have sound sleep and, and wake up well rested. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, give me one second, I'll grab a pen and paper. Okay. All right, and uh, anybody else, you can unmute and speak. Hi, this is Edna. Yes. And my question is, how, how can you get a sound sleep when you have so many thoughts running in your mind? Sound sleep and thoughts. Okay. Wonderful. Anybody else? Hi, uh, my name is Shilpa. Uh -huh. And uh, I have uh, two questions. Um, how can I, uh, I think one is related to what was already discussed, which is like, how can I get a sound sleep so I'm not waking up with the thoughts that I had previous night? And second, like, I feel like sleep has a very big impact on my mental state and I struggle a lot, especially with jet lag. And how can I, like, when I travel, like, how can I make make a better routine for myself? Okay, thank you. You must be a traveling soul. Okay, anybody else? Sister Gilda, Giada, Giada, sorry. Yes, hi. Um, I am interested to know also, uh, how can we take the opportunity like of sleep as a reset of uh, um, who we wanna be in the sense of like leaving back like the negative thoughts and like waking up the next um, morning with like those good intention and positive um, outlook. How we can reset ourselves, right? Right, like how to use sleep for that reset. 
right? So that you don't wake up and you're already thinking, oh yeah, like yesterday night I was upset and now I'm still upset, like that you can kind of start over. Okay, yeah, I think that's a really important thing to know, how we can just cut off what was there yesterday, right? Okay, Sister Cynthia? Um, I am curious about how we might harness the power of our dreams and our subconscious for our healing while we're sleeping. Wow, okay, one minute. Pen, pen, pen. <laughs> Power of dream, how we can harness, right? Dream. How we can, how we can harness the power of dream. Yes. Correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so I Edna. have one more question. Yes. Like, how many hours should a human being sleep in order to be active? Because sometimes I am so tired, I sleep for more than 12 hours and I still feel that I did not sleep at all. <laughs> so I don't oh. know what's wrong. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So, and your previous question was, how can we have a sound sleep? Yeah, sound sleep, yeah. Okay. Um, who else is left? Anybody else has Melanie, sister Melanie? Um, oh, for me, you know, actually I'm sleeping. I started to sleep very well. I've uh, been doing yoga nidra. That has helped me. But, because, but I have to do that one every night. Because I noticed that what I, that sometimes comes the nightmares, but during the day, and when I do that type of meditation, since it's so soft, the nightmare becomes like, oh, it's like I immediately recognize it that it's so false. You know that it's like a wrong fear, that in the same dream it reveals that it's something false that is not gonna happen, and they say. Oh, the same like I, what I've been meditating during the day. So I don't know, you know, but the, but certainly uh, the, the other meditation, Raha Yoga, only during the day I can do it, but during the night, no, it doesn't help me, or I don't know if I'm doing the wrong way. Okay. The, the meditation doesn't work in the night. You have... No, in the night, no, only the yoga nidra, yes, it does. But during the day, it does help me the other one. So, you know, what am I doing wrong? I am saying. Okay, we will look at that. So thank you for all that. That, you know, gives me an idea how we can uh, go through because it's not just a lecture. It is our learning. We are here to learn, all of us. And I will learn more than you all by just telling you things, you know, so because something gets corrected inside. I, I could have gathered many information by studying, but when I speak out, I channelize in the right way. And these questions help me big time. Uh, there's one chat here. Uh, Shanti, you know, by yes, yes. Canada. I have one question that you might not be able to answer. Uh, try. <laughs> okay. How come that I'm sleepless in Canada? Uh -huh. Sleepless in Vancouver specifically. Okay. Sleepless. Maybe it's the only, vibration. Only in Vancouver. Oh God. No, actually <laughs> Canada at the moment. Canada. Oh wow. And then other places you can sleep. Stone intellect. Okay. Om Shanti. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> and we have Rani Ben and others I know, so I'm not going to ask them. Okay. Um, so let me, uh, these are your, I heard your questions and let me look at, let me start with what I want, you know, from this, what I want to give. My number one purpose is I want good health for you all. 
because health and sleep big time related you know so uh, one third of our lifetime approximately we sleep so there has it has to be a very important uh, event of our life and it has medically proven that there is a big impact of the sleep if we have a good night good quality sleep then we tend to remain healthy uh, and you know if we cannot have good night sleep then there are many diseases that are associated so we will look at that uh, another thing i want to uh, communicate to you through this is i want to give you some tools some tips that you can use for improving the qualities of the quality of the sleep so these two things um so let me just touch base on how the sleep and health are related uh science has done uh, given us uh, many ideas what the sleep has to do with the health but science is not able to tell the the deep significance of the sleep the science is able to tell what are the advantages of the sleep, but what the purpose of the sleep, we don't know. So we are still searching. So what the science knows is that when we go to sleep, you know, normal, we relax and rejuvenate. We, uh, whatever tension or we may have, it we unload that and we become fresh in the morning. So purpose for the sleep is to uh, become fresh again. Um, science has also, by research, suggested that the it has to do with the memory also. Throughout the day, we uh, engage into many, many events. And a lot of all of these things that we do, it gets recorded. And uh, if you continue to record something uh, without stopping, then it becomes a big load that you cannot carry on. So you need to process all these things that you're taking in. And some of the things need to be deleted. Some of the thing needs to be uh, solidified. So there are brain rewiring occurs inside. So if I see something good then, uh, that I like, then I tend to retain that more by this interconnection in neuronal interconnection and rewiring. And so that process happens more in the night. In the daytime, I'm just continuously um, you know, recording and recording and recording. There's no time for processing. So in the night when uh, everything slows down, then uh, this rewiring becomes more solid. Then I tend, I remember good events, the things that I uh, are of importance to me. Uh, I also tend to uh, solidify some of the uh, bad events because uh, I think it's a protective mechanism of the body uh, that I want to remember this so that I can be careful. That's the protection, but body doesn't know how to process that really. Uh, it actually causes damage by remembering bad events too, but it just as a protection, it does it. And then uh, many things need not be remembered. What did I eat yesterday? What did I wear yesterday? Who did I talk? I don't need to remember everything. And so uh, that it's like a, uh, how you delete your emails like that. So that deleting process and uh, uh, solidifying the memory process, it happens when we go to sleep. We also know that we, our body relaxes, our mind becomes fresh because our thoughts, uh, the, the, thought, the speed of the thought decreases in the sleep. Um, when, uh, when we go to sleep, what, uh, what happens is uh, our metabolism decreases. 
uh, normally we have, if you say 100% metabol metabolic rate in the daytime, in the night, about 30 to 35% less energy is consumed. And so there is a, a gain of the energy that happens in the night. All the cells uh, function um, as before, but with a dim light. And so there is a, a lot of conservation of the energy. And that is uh, also a, a reason for the boost in the energy next day. Um, the National Institute of Neurological Science, Neuro, uh, National Institute of Neurological Diseases and Stroke suggests that uh, we have not been able to pinpoint the purpose of the sleep. So it is proven, we don't know. Spiritually what happens is uh, we disconnect. What happens in the, in the sleep, when we go to sleep, we disconnect, we the soul disconnect from the body partially. And this disconnection, because soul is a, is a living energy, and a body has its own automatic process also. When the two combination are working together, there is a life, there is activity, there is noise, there is sound, there is drama. But when this disconnect happens, the drama slows down, the body is still functioning, breathing going on, heart rate, everything, but the soul separate. And in this separation, there is quietness. Soul's original nature is peace. Body's original nature is also peace. You know, there is a movement in the body, but there is no sound, no drama. And so there is peace and peace separation. So this separation leads to quietness and calmness. So that's a, a spiritual way of understanding why, um, what happens when, you, when we go to sleep. And maybe one day science will look into at this matter, uh, this uh, spirituality and and come up with the right answer. When we don't get a good night's sleep, what happens? Uh, during the day, we have accumulation of metabolic um, chemicals and all the cells, the chemicals are in the body and uh, these uh, toxins, so-called, we can call them toxins, but uh, unwanted chemicals that need to be processed. So in the nighttime, it is processed more than in the daytime. We also have cell damage. So in the nighttime, there's a repair work going on that's more enhanced than during the daytime. If we don't get a good night's sleep, then all these processes don't happen. And this becomes a basis for many diseases. And the science have uh, implicated the association of lack of quality sleep with diabetes, high blood pressure, coronary artery disease, uh, depression, even obesity and increased uh, chance of um, in infection, lowered immunity, thereby increase infection. So you can, you can uh, understand from this that the, uh, the sleep is really good, quality of the sleep is important. With this understanding, what are we doing about it? We just, uh, we just feel, most of us, that sleep is a, a passive process. You just go to bed. You know, you could feel tired, you go to bed, and then you wake up, you let it happen. But now, the, uh, the spirituality teaches us that you have a control. You can control the sleep. It's not just going to bed, but you can actively do something about it and make your sleep the quality sleep. Okay. There are so two, two kinds of responses from our. One is we just be body and just uh, go through the life 
and then fall asleep when the sleep comes and wake up when the, when the wakefulness comes. That is old way. That is, uh, it could be potentially damaging. New way, I'm a soul I can control. Okay, so just uh, some of the questions that came from you all was how can I have sound sleep, right? So that, so as a soul, we can actively um, improve the quality. And we will look at some of the things. Um, the, the first thing that I want you to look at is the mechanism of the sleep and how the sleep happens. So I will share something. Um, let me. Sister Shilpa said that she's unable to hear anything. Everybody else is able to hear, right? Yeah. Actually, I disconnected and I can hear now. Sorry. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. Disconnected and connected back. Yeah, thanks. No problem. Okay, so... Chat. All right, so this is our class sleep. Uh, these are the references before I go through uh, some of the slides here. I want to acknowledge these uh, sources from where I, I got a lot of understanding of what I'm saying. One is NINDS that I just mentioned, National Institute of neurological diseases and stroke. It's a beautiful article. You can click on this one and you can have, you know, very good understanding of what this sleep is, sleep is about. <clears throat> uh, the second is a sleep management by Captain Shiv Singh. Uh, this is a beautiful, it's in Hindi. These two are Hindi, but this is in is, uh, English. This is a, a website. So, but those of you who do not understand Hindi, I think there may be some way of uh, looking this and uh, on uh, the subtitles. I'm not sure, but if not, you can uh, probably write your email and I can uh, uh, forward some translation of what this brother is saying, these brothers are saying. Uh, so Captain Chiu Singh, and uh, Dr. Satish Gupta. These are the very two beautiful uh, video uh, presentations about the sleep management. <clears throat> okay, so let's look at this one. How, what happens in, uh, the, in the brain? What, how do we process the sleep? These are the different organs. These are the different uh, uh, centers in the brain that are actively involved in managing the sleep, okay? So starting from the hypothalamus, right? Hypothalamus. Hypothalamus have sleep center and arousal center. So both are inside. So they work in the harmony when at certain time the sleep is more, sleep center is more active. So you have sleep hormones released. And then at certain other times, the arousal center is in the daytime, you have arousal center uh, up. And so you, uh, you awaken. Then we have the uh, thalamus. Thalamus, what it does is it connects the outside and the next trans, it, uh, the, takes in the, um, uh, the information from outside through the sense organs, like I hear what you hear, what you see, et cetera, and transmit that to the cerebral cortex in the brain theory. And so this process goes on uh, when we are awake. When we go to sleep, 
the thalamus become very silent, very silent. So nothing from outside can go into the screen on the cerebral cortex. And we, although there is sound outside, we don't perceive, we, we hear, but we don't perceive it, you see? And so that's important process of that happens in the thalamus. Um, it has also important role in the memory. You know, when you have the thalamus connected to the, the cerebral cortex, what I will, what I will see, it gets recorded. And so this recording, it is involved in that recording memory process. Okay. Then we have uh, suprachiasmic, suprachiasmic nucleus, SCN. It's a, it's a center that connects with what is called as a pineal gland, pineal gland, pineal gland, this one right here, pineal gland. Okay, pineal gland importance is it, uh, um, it secretes a hormone called melatonin. You must have heard of about melatonin from vitamin world. People buy that melatonin to sleep, you know? And so it is a natural hormone secreted by the pineal gland. And it's not like a one secretion, but it can, it can vary its secretion depending on whether it's a day or night. So in the night when the light is dim, the, the melatonin secretion is higher. And in the daytime, when the light is bright, its secretion is low. Now this SCN, that nucleus, suprachiasmic nucleus, uh, what it does is it uh, it senses the light, you know, the light that focus that comes through the eye, it senses that, and it sends that information to the pineal gland, and as a result, now pineal gland where is its secretion of the melatonin? You see how the light outside gets transmitted into how I will. Uh, how whether whether I fall asleep or awake. So light day and night, light and darkness outside. How our body responds. This is how it happens. So light falls in the eye. It stimulates that SC nucleus, and that stimulates the pineal gland. And so depending on whether it's dark or light, you have you know up or down. You become dim. You fall asleep or you wake up. Okay, then this is amygdala. This is amygdala. Uh, it is a really important uh, a part of the brain uh, that is involved in, uh, in the, the emotions. Emotions. Uh, let me see. Okay, so what is what it what is the role of this limbic system and the, its role is uh, um, or or amygdala amygdala is a part of the limbic system so i just say limbic system what is the role its role is in rem sleep rapid eye movement sleep and we will look at it in a minute there are two parts of the sleep one is rapid eye movement one is non rapid eye movement it is a rapid eye movement where we see the dreams, where we consume the energy rather than gain it, okay? So it's the part of the sleep where we consume energy, we waste our energy, and it is a part where we see the dream. And it is very active during that REM sleep, that amygdala. And it is the one that injects the emotions into your dream. It is the one that injects the, uh, the reality in your dream. You feel real, you see the sound, you see the visual of what you're seeing in a dream. You hear real, you, you feel everything is real because of this amygdala, okay? Uh, and in the, in the daytime, uh, and in the non-REM sleep, 
the, the activity in the amygdala is less. So you are quiet. You don't see anything, you don't feel anything. Then you have the mid, this, uh, uh, the st brain stem. Brain stem consists of the midbrain, pons, and medulla. That brain stem, what it does, it plays a very important role in the sleep. When you go to sleep, uh, when you're seeing the dream, when you're in the dream stage of the sleep, uh, you can see something good, but you can see something violent also. Uh, you know, so let's say you are seeing a dream where you're running fast. Uh, and if we did not have this, uh, uh, this brainstem, then, uh, then you would run as you see. You know, but that's very dangerous. You could harm yourself or others by moving. So what the role of this uh, brainstem is, it, uh, it stops the body movements. When you're seeing the dreams, when you're in the REM stage, it stops the body movement. You become paralyzed. So you can see, but you can't move. You can hear, but you can't move, you see? And so the, uh, you're seeing some very uh, vivid uh, uh, drama uh, or scene and your amygdala is hyperactive injecting these emotions into it. And, but this uh, part of the brain doesn't let you move. How would you feel then? You'd feel scared. You can't move, you feel scared. So this is one of the sisters had asked um, uh, nightmares, nightmares. So this is the mechanism of the nightmares right here. The use uh, the, how does it work? How does it, uh, how do we see the nightmares? This is what happens in the nightmare. We have hyperactive amygdala and we have the also functioning the, the uh, brainstem that paralyzes you and you see this nightmare and you get terror. Okay, I think we covered all of them. Yeah. So that's the, that's the now the purpose of showing this is uh, to understand, let me sh stop share and I'll come back to this one again. The, the purpose, to, purpose is to understand how we sleep or what happens. So uh, you know, when you know the anatomy, then you can identify the problems that are associated with it, right? And so you can effectively then treat that. So for example, uh, you, have, you have a problem with the, um, and, and uh, the terror, the night, uh, the nightmares, you can modify your um, input to your brain uh, through meditation, for example. And because how does the amygdala work? Amygdala looks at the, your subconscious mind. And it is the dream with uh, and through the subconscious mind, it gathers some information and it is projected into your, uh, into your sleep, in your dreams. So cleansing of your subconscious mind is the key. Cleansing of subconscious mind. We, we have conscious mind, the alert mind, awake mind, and then we have subconscious, a deeper mind from where, uh, we automatically respond. Uh, these are the actually memories of the past and even the present, some of the present. So the, in the superficial part of the subconscious, you have present memories. In the deeper part of the subconscious is, uh, is older events. And in the deepest level of the subconscious, you have oldest, oldest memory. And uh, the spirituality teaches that, that at the depth 
of your subconscious mind, you have beauty. You, you have beautiful memories. The best memories are deep down. But before that depth is reached, you have all these, uh, you know, not so pleasant kind of memories are there. What you can do realistically and practically is you can learn to meditate. When you learn to meditate, you clean your subconscious mind. You, whatever the unresolved issues are there, you can clean that, you can resolve it. And when you resolve it, you go down and all you have now, your subconscious is full of, um, there's no negativity left in the subconscious mind. Now, all you have in your subconscious is your, is your beauty, your peace, your power, your happiness, your love. All these are there. So when you sleep, you have, a be you have beautiful dreams. You have, you have peaceful dreams. You, you feel really good when you wake up. And uh, I, heard, I had heard in one of the uh, seniors lectures, that if you truly uh, meditate in in a real sense, in a in a in a, with a real method, good method, for approximately six to eight months, your dreams will change. Your dreams will change because slow by slowly by slowly, uh, as you meditate, you you become more and more positive because we have positive and negative field within us. And it's like a drop of the water, each drop that you have a dirty water pot and drop by drop, you, when you fill it, all the dirt comes out and now you have positive. So that's how it happens. And it takes six to eight months. And uh, so how do you know that your meditation is well? You can sleep nicely, when you wake up, you wake up with a smile and you have no uh, dreams, scary dreams. You know, you have good, easy, very nice dreams. <clears throat> so, but if you get uh, 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 sleep terrors or anything like that, don't get disheartened because uh, you could be meditating, but you are going, uh, you know, in the depth of your subconscious. So at, at one point, you, you will have even worse dreams than you normally you would have as you learn to meditate. Okay, so what, is the, what are the things that you can do? What are the things that you can do? One is meditation, we can say. So that was a question, uh, that was the answer for Sister Melanie. Uh, what are the things that you can do so that you, have, you can have sound sleep, right? You can uh, learn to listen to your body and you can follow a rhythm. So now I want to introduce to you one other concept, what is called as circadian rhythm. Uh, our body is, uh, you know, our body is, it's like a made up of five elements, like water, fire, earth, ether, and air. So it is a it is a natural it is natural that the body responds to things that happen in the nature. So if there is a storm outside, you know, a lot of people I work in the pain clinic, and a lot of people say that when it's when it's raining, uh, I can feel the pain more or some in the cold months they say that I can really this my pain is worse and then even uh, there are some people say that uh, uh, I can predict that it's going to to rain tomorrow and and they're right they can do that because their body is responsive to the nature our bodies are responsive to the nature because we are part of the nature right um, so listen to your body and the body has a rhythm. There are many processes that happen in the body, right? So uh, there are, our heart rate is, our heart is beating, the breathing is going on, 
digestion process, the cellular mechanism are on this, even in the sleep or day, it doesn't matter, it's just on and on, it just goes on. And so all these little processes are on. Uh, so how does it work? Is it constantly ongoing or it varies? It varies. It varies accordingly, according to what is outside. And outside stimulus has the effect. And the biggest stimulus to our body is the rising of the sun and falling of the sun. The, the daybreak and the night, okay? So what happens when the daybreak happens? Uh, the light comes in the ambience and you can see the light through your eyes. And this light, like we were seeing in the diagram, how it uh, affects the SC nucleus, supra suprachiasmatic nucleus, and how it sends signal to the pineal and all that. So it has an effect. And so uh, in response to day and night, in response to um, the ambience, your body secretes the hormones less or more, okay? Your endocrine system will secrete less or more hormone. And it, it's like a wave, it's like a rhythm. This rhythm is created based on what is outside. Now, how, is, uh, the fun how does the body, fun when does the body function the best? The body will function the best when it is in line with the rhythm outside. So when the sun is rising and if I fall asleep at that time, or when the sun is down and I remain awake at that time, then I'm fighting against myself because my body is trying to secrete based on the sun's light. Sun's light is gone, dim, and so my natural response to that is increased in the, the melatonin, right? Because it's dark, I need, my body will secrete more melatonin, but I can consciously avoid going to sleep and I continue to work on my computer. I'm fighting against myself. I lose energy. I, the quality of my work decreases, my efficiency decreases. But you know, most teenagers and most people, office people, most working class people, they still want to remain awake in the night and finish my job. Let me do one more hour. I can finish this now, then in the morning. And, and then they are able to do it. And they are able to do it good. Why? Because they, what they are doing is they are hyper stimulating their uh, sympathetic system. It's like inject, if I have given injection of adrenaline into somebody and now this person is running fast, that's what they're doing. So I'm artificially making myself energetic and then remaining awake against my natural sleep cycle. And then I'm able to accomplish what I want. And then I feel that I've done a good job. And then now I make it as a pattern. Over and over, what happens if, if I have that pattern, then at one, a time occurs when I am unable to mount my uh, a sympathetic response. I create stress in the body so much that now I am unable to create more stress to the situation that is there. And I just, at that point, I just break down. And so, we artificially work against our sleep cycle and uh, taking help of our stress hormones, thereby making ourselves more prone for diseases, high blood pressure, anxiety, accidents. You know, if I'm hyperactive doing things under the effect of the cortisol, then I will make accident because I will make funny moves quickly and I can just come into accident. So my immunity level decreases, I can have infection. 
I age fast. Initially, I may look younger, but then after many years of stress, I look old, 10 years older than I am actually. So it's like injecting artificially and then the puncture happens and you're done. You see? So that's, uh, so what you have to do is listen to your body. Listen to the body. At 10 o'clock, before 10 o'clock, nine to 10 approximately in the evening, you know, sun has gone down. There is enough darkness outside. It is the natural response of the body to feel sleepy. Your body will give you a clue. Listen to this clue. You will have a little yawn or something. You feel a little tired. Your eyelid will become a little heavy. Now, from habit, you can just let it go and then you can come into that stress mode or you can have a cup of coffee and everything is now fine. You don't have any more sleepiness. That's killing your natural, uh, you know, natural uh, tendency. Your natural tendency is to go to sleep in a nice manner. So you, you when you do that, then you become, uh, you know, you fall into this trap of stress. So listen, listening to the body, and for that you need to be silent. For that you need to have this understanding that we are having. You know, this this is just the knowledge that make you understand. Okay, I need to do this. So that understanding and determination. You you tell yourself that I'm not going to neglect this. The first yawn, I'm going to put my computer away. I'm going to go to sleep. Okay. Uh, follow the rhythm. Allow, allow your body to let you rest. That you can do. Uh, then uh, one of the one of the parts of the brain called the the basal forebrain. It releases a, uh, we talked about the, the melatonin. There is a similar hormone called adenosine. Adenosine secreted by the forebrain, brain, uh, it releases that and, and, and it supports the sleep. So uh, this is important to know because uh, adenosine is, uh, it naturally allows you to sleep when you have ca caffeine or something, you know, the, some drinks like caffeine or tea or something, it, it counters that adenosine. And then uh, you just oppose the natural sleeping tendency. You remain awake. So avoiding caffeine uh, containing drinks, especially in the night, uh, is a good thing that you can do. Um, Then um, another thing that we were mentioning is the sound, how the sound and the light, how the light uh, is transmitted as the, um, the sleep um, is you can dim the light. You know, if you have strong light in the room, you can make it dim so that uh, it, uh, it facilitates the sleep. Uh, as far as possible, make your sleep comfortable, uh, sound uh, low. Uh, if you have done, if you are in the habit of doing exercise, do it uh, three, four hours before, not just before going to sleep, because then your body is in then exercise mode, then you can't relax. Uh, digestion, eating. Uh, if you can eat, uh, what you know, your intestine and your digestive processes it goes on whatever you eat. So if you uh, if you stop eating um, be, uh, three to four hours before, that would be really helpful because it takes as much that much time for initial digestive process 
to finish. Otherwise, uh, you know, I could sleep if my sleep time is 10 o'clock and if I eat at say nine o'clock, then my digestive process is not complete and uh, my sleep is not that deep. Because although my mind is, uh, is dim, uh, my body is still working. Both mind and body has to uh, you know, relax. So that is important. Uh, also eating uh, lighter food is, is uh, healthier in the nights. Uh, eating less is healthier in the nights. Don't have you know, heavy meals. Uh, eating the foods that, is, uh, that are e easily digestible is, is uh, better. Uh, avoiding uh, you know, meat or something, uh, cheese or something like that in the night uh, is better than something very lighter. Uh, and of course, uh, avoiding alcohol, et cetera, drinks, uh, that is, you know, that everybody knows that we don't need to do that. Um, then there was some question, there was a question about the shift. I think one of the sisters had mentioned night shift. I don't know, I'm not sure. Yeah. So uh, people who work in the night shift, uh, what they can do is because uh, we, we, we saw the importance of uh, following that diurnal rhythm or circadian rhythm, uh, where uh, our, we follow our body to what's outside. But the night workers, uh, they have, uh, you know, not a good sleep actually. And uh, their, their uh, awake hours are also not very energetic because of the body's system, how, how the body is built. So I could be a night worker, I could, I could be doing night shift, but my efficiency level is not going to be that great. Uh, I, my sleep, when I come home from the night duty, would not be uh, a good a quality sleep. But what I can do is I can do as much as I can in terms of making my sleep um, more quality sleep. Every other aspect I can uh, fine tune in a better way. Keeping my thought level you know, it has a bigger, biggest impact that the science doesn't, has so far not touched it. But uh, our thought uh, process has a huge impact on how we sleep. Uh, throughout the day, we have, we create many thoughts and these thoughts are, um, um, they become our memory. They be become our experiences. And uh, they, be, they are associated, each of these thoughts are associated with the emotion, different emotions. I could have uh, happy emotions, but I could have sad emotion too. I could have uh, uh, angry uh, emotion associated with something. And, and uh, the characteristic of this heavy negative uh, type of emotions is they are not just like a one second here and one second not there. They tend to remain. So if I have uh, 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 anger, for example, this anger will persist for quite some time. Even the person is gone, the event is over, the thought process is gone, but the, the feeling of anger is still working. So uh, here is the importance of meditation. Here is the importance of remaining uh, in charge. When I say that we can make a difference as a soul, I can make a difference as a soul. In Hindi, we call, we call uh, there's a saying that uh, there are three words, Nindrajit, 
माया जीत जगत जीत फर्स्ट इज निंद्रा जीत दैट मीन्स द विक्ट्री ओवर स्लीप वेन आई एम विक्टोरियस ओवर माई स्लीप दैट्स निंद्रा जीत स्टेज सो निंद्रा जीत इज नॉट लाइक आई कैन रिमेन अवेक इट इज आई हैव कंट्रोल on my sleep i can bring quality in my sleep i can fall asleep when i want to i can wake up when i want to i can make my dreams beautiful i can sleep nicely i can wake up with a smile that is nindra ji so when i am victorious over my sleep then i am maya ji Maya ji this Maya is illusion I can be victorious over the illusion whatever drama is happening I can go beyond this drama and see look at this drama as a detached observer and I can really not get influenced by what is happening outside somebody can be shouting at me but I'm way up and i'm just looking at this scene without getting involved in this negativity i can bring my positivity out and calm this person down and not have any negative further effect on me that's maya jit i can become maya jit by becoming nindra jit by by having victory over my sleep i can have victory over my uh the drama right victory over the drama drama of life whatever is happening in the drama i can be victorious and that's what we want we want to be able to enjoy the life we would not want to get uh, uh pulled down into something negative right and then jagat jit jagat jit is the victory over victory of the world when i become victorious over my drama my drama is my scenes that happen around me my family my society and so when i can have victory over this i can be victorious person of the world you know i can i can beautify my world i can make my world really good see how much important this is this is spirituality and i want to bring it here because uh, i think there was one uh, question about this um then let me see dream how uh sister cynthia had a question about how we can uh how we can uh modify our dream something like this right yeah yeah so how we can so we saw that how we can make our dream beautiful you know in the end i will unmute everybody so just i don't i just want to keep this flow so that everybody will get benefited so the to make the dream is in our hand like uh, that brother that i was mentioning you can you can have positive dreams you can make your dreams positive you have that power so and the way is cleaning your subconscious make your subconscious subconscious means your memories you make your memories clean how do you do that you have bad memories you go deep down in a meditative state bring positivity and let the negativity merge and let the positivity be on the surface that's all so now i happy dreams sleepless in vancouver canada <laughs> right yeah the yes yeah, sister you're right that i would not i don't know but i will try to answer that you see what this wow there are a lot of chats so i'll read it at the end the chats but um, the 
my understanding of uh, if if you can sleep in one place and can't sleep in another place i think it has to do with the familiarity you know if i'm if i'm comfortable uh, in my apartment to sleep it doesn't matter i go to a five star hotel or some other place i won't feel that comfort that i have right here you know this is my sleeping place that could be the one reason why you are unable to sleep in Vancouver because your place of comfort is somewhere else. Uh, maybe there are some memories associated with the place where you are uh, that is uh, that just comes into your mind and now you have this you know uh, awakening of this uh, these thought processes that doesn't let you sleep. I think these are the two uh, things that I I can think of. Okay, so I want to share one more uh, thing. Be uh, very important. Uh, let me see. Okay, so we were here. Alamas. <clears throat> oh, uh, yeah, jet lag. So one sister had asked uh, about the jet lag, Sister Shilpa. Uh, in case of a jet lag, what happens is uh, your circadian rhythm, your body system and your circadian rhythm is out of whack. So there's, there's no synchronicity between the ambience and how you respond. So your body doesn't know, uh, you know, as you're flying from here to India, for example, 19 hours flight, uh, I don't, my body doesn't know what, how to adjust. Uh, so it's out of sync. And that's why, uh, and we fly through different, uh, you know, time zones. And so there's a lot of mismatch. Um, I think, you know, what we can do about it is uh, one possible way to deal with that is uh, maintain a, a, a timetable as you travel one place to the other. Like, for example, if I'm traveling from uh, from Los Angeles to Dubai um, and then onwards. I just keep this time on what time I started. I'm, I'm starting at Los Angeles. So I keep my awareness of my Los Angeles time and then try to sleep when, when it's night in Los Angeles. I may be in the, in the, in the day zone somewhere but I try to sleep. And so, and then whenever, wherever you reach your destination, then you reset your clock. Then you just follow to what, uh, where you are. Uh, so you are, you're supposed to be sleeping, but it's a daytime. You just have to get used to that and just readjust your clock. But in the flight, you can do that. You can uh, just stick to one time zone and follow that. I hope this answers. Uh, your question. Uh, and then uh, I want to come to this one, <clears throat> the sleep cycle. This has many answers and like, uh, you know, one of the references that I was mentioning, this is the picture from that brother's uh, lecture. <clears throat> so as you can see, we don't sleep you know, continuously we sleep in cycles. We go from uh, there. Go. Uh, there are two kinds of sleep: the re rapid eye movement and non-rapid eye movement. Uh, the rapid eye movement is the energy consumption, and non-rapid eye movement is the energy conservation. Rapid eye movement is where our eyes move rapidly, and we see the dreams and we get paralyzed 
our our midbrain, uh, our brainstem uh, relaxes the muscles, so we don't move, we don't act out our, dream, our dreams, so we don't injure ourselves and others. But that's the mind runs runs fast, and it sees this uh, different kinds of dreams. So, so that's the the we consume a lot of energy. But the purpose of the sleep is to gain, is not to consume. So uh, uh, one of the goals of a good night's sleep is to have less of these REM sleep. Doesn't mean that you don't want to see the dream. Okay, you want to strike a good balance. So if, if you see these sleep cycles, uh, this each of these box is one cycle, another, another, another. So there are five cycles uh, depicted here. Each cycle approximately uh, 90 to 120 minutes. Rough as if you can, uh, so say 100 minutes, for example, 100 minutes average. So 100 minute cycle. In this 100 minute cycle, I go from remaining awake to light sleep to deep sleep. And then light sleep, uh, from deep sleep to light sleep, from light sleep back to uh, almost awake stage where I see the dreams, where I have the rapid eye movement. And then from rapid eye movement, I go back to light sleep, deep sleep, deep sleep, then again light, and then again, rapid eye movement, and that. So, and uh, what happens is the the amount of the depth, the deep sleep, decreases as we progress. The amount of the rapid eye movement increases as we progress. Okay, the dream that we see is ten minutes in the first hour, first cycle, 20, I'm just giving you a rough estimate number, but it increases to 20, for example, then 30. And in the fourth or fifth cycle, you see dreams like hours. So you don't want to go to that fifth stage or fourth, fifth or fourth cycle where you're seeing dreams for, for one or two hours. You would consume more energy than gain. So you want to don't want to sleep that much. Also, the deep stage of the sleep, it uh, it keeps decreasing. So initially it's thirty minutes, then twenty minutes, then ten, and then zero minute. Fourth cycle, zero minute. So uh, looking at this one, you can say that how much you want to sleep, this much from here to here. Anything more than that, avoid it. Maybe here, but not beyond, you know? So what are these? Uh, one, two, three boxes. One of the sisters, Sister E, I, my pen stopped writing, so I could write only E, was asking how many hours? So this is the answer, how many hours? 100 minutes, 100 minutes, 100 minutes. 300 minutes of sleep will give you a restful sleep. You will have conserved energy. You will have conserved your energy. You will not have wasted your, your energy. So if you slept fourth hour, you, you will wake up tired. Fifth hour, you, you will wake up more tired because you're using all your energy into that dream stage. And these, dream, these dreams, as you progress, become more and more vivid, more and more uh, violent, I should say. You know, initial dreams are pleasant and easy. You don't tend to remember you have dream, but you, it's just little something and then you forget. But as you progress, it becomes more and more vivid because that amygdala wakes up and it just sends emotions more at that time. Right, so uh, three sleep cycles, and uh, if you count hundred minutes, five hours. But the, I think that is a very strict way of saying five hours because for 
somebody who's meditating for them it's okay five hours you know because their mind the moment you hit the pillow you're gone you know we have meditators like that in brahma kumaris who just you know turn to one side and they fall asleep uh, but because they have very clear conscious you know they have meditated throughout the day they have not gone into any any there 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 has not been any negative thoughts so they are able to sleep really well and quickly 5 hours but average you can say let's consider this as a um if you consider this as a 2 hour cycle then 2 4 6 hours okay if you are not a meditator maybe 6 hours that's that's much you should sleep and then according to the diurnal rhythm or circadian rhythm you you must finish one cycle before uh, midnight before midnight uh, because if you have not finished that one cycle before midnight then you have lost this beautiful part of the sleep And so if you want if i want to finish my uh, my first cycle by midnight i need to go to sleep at uh, 10 o'clock no later than 10 10 to 12 my first cycle is over right and so uh, that first cycle is the most important part of my dream my sleep the first cycle is the most important cycle why because the rem is least the energy consumption is less the deep deeper stages of the sleep is more uh so i have more i feel more rested in that by being in that first uh cycle let's say i avoid this one and i remain awake till midnight and maybe 2 o'clock doing my project or something and then now i try to fall asleep where am i sleeping i'm sleeping i'm starting my sleep somewhere here 2 o'clock right here in my third cycle so if i start my sleep at 2 o'clock uh i have a little maybe 5 10 minutes of the the relaxation uh, deep sleep that's that's how much my brain will get and then i will see a big part of the dream so what i get uh will i will consume everything in what i lose so i wake up tired throughout the day i will have uh yawning i would not have concentration or uh, you know i would not be able to focus so this answers that uh number of hours that uh we should sleep and also answers when we should sleep before 10 o'clock and how it's not like at 10 o'clock you just go to sleep 10 o'clock means 9:30 9:30 you stop uh you slow down you slow down to stop you don't stop sudden so you cannot just go speed of 70 and then with a full break you will tumble uh you can't stop so what you have to do is you have to slow down and to slow down you have to stop um uh, the things that will stimulate you the most and uh, electronics would be one uh stop put your phone aside put your computer aside uh you can read if you want to uh, that would be better than working on a computer and emails and chats um you know that so slow down to stop and you can meditate uh when you learn to meditate uh it sounds like a something really uh you'll have to force yourself into meditation that's how it sounds like right that uh you know 9:30 you stop everything whatever you love you want to see the movie you stop it and now you sit in silence and meditate it's like a punishment but uh when you learn the beauty of the meditation you learn to you learn when you learn to meditate truly you receive 
the joy that you cannot receive from anything. There's nothing in this world that can give you that much joy that you can by meditating. Because in meditation, you go into your deep subconscious level where your happiness is. And uh, you feel happy by working uh, on a project. You feel happy by listening to something or by seeing a movie because by but when you see these things, it awakens that happiness from within you. And that happiness you feel, and you feel that it's coming from outside. But it is the stimulus that awakens something from, from within you. When you meditate, you don't need any outside stimulus. You, you emerge this... Uh, this happiness, this peace, this uh, bliss from inside. And then when you emerge something uh, with your own power and not from outside stimulus, it, it becomes a permanent, you see? Something from outside, it's temporary because when the outside stimulus is gone, you are, you, there's a, you stop creating that happiness. But once you have emerged something from within, it is permanent. You remain happy. You, so once you, in the meditation, once you become a peaceful person, you guaranteed you will remain peaceful when you're interacting with others. You will not become angry even after 10 days, 20 days or one year. So every time you meditate, you improve your personality, you improve your quality, you improve your interrelationships, uh, your relation with your work, you become accurate in your work, you become perfect in your work. I think I am just diverging, <laughs> but sleep cycle. Let's get back to that. And uh, so this is uh, clear, I hope. And it is 7.55, I think we stop at eight. So let me see if there's anything else that I need to cover because I have my notes here, I want to look at it. Um, yeah, I think we are done. So, I can answer any things that I did not cover and I'm going to unmute everyone and let me, and then I can read all these chats, the big chats that are there. So let me first unmute, uh, unmute them. So, so, okay, so you're all able to unmute. So you can talk. If not, I will read these chats. Can I ask a question? Thank you, Dr. Vinod, for the lovely class. I mm -hmm. didn't make some notes, so thank you, bless you. Okay, I wanted to ask you, does uh, diabetes also contribute to the sleep, you know, to the irregularity, you know, of a uh, wake up time, you know, does that also contribute diabetes? Yes, uh, it's the, the, the sleep will, affect the, the diabetes. It is known that uh, if you have a lack of sleep or yeah. uh, not a good quality sleep, then you almost generate yourself a pre-diabetic stage. You create a stress. And so this stress, uh, when you're not sleeping well, you have a stress hormones, increased stress hormone. Increased stress hormone will create an environment like diabetes. So your insulin is not absorbed by the cells, you know, easily. Oh, okay. So like diabetes. So it's the other way. Uh, of course, the diabetes. When you have diabetes, it will affect you. When you have a disease, it will naturally affect your ability to go to sleep. Thank you. Okay. Uh, university. Uh, this I'm reading. Uh, uh, one of the chats, uh, University of British Columbia, this is from a uh, sister from Canada, says, 
uh, University of British Columbia, a wonderful international campus on nat native land, Muscam territory. Terri yeah, uh, these are the Musqueam uh, indigenous people. That's their uh, land. Oh, That's so you can you can you can speak, sister. Uh, I had a quite an intense day, so uh -huh. I just look inside and say. Okay, that's fine. That's Thank fine. you so much for the wonderful presentation. We'll yeah, connect not, later. Thank you. Not a problem. Uh, so let me finish reading. Uh, Musqueam Territory has a fabulous sleep cleaning programs, which uh, Sister's Son once attended in the past few years. All the high-tech cyberspace, uh, cybernet gadgets, addictions certainly do not help with a healthy sleep cycle. And she thanks us for comprehensive presentation. Um, and the same sister mentioned a decent place. Uh, you be cool, you be cool, uh, as she calls, as the only decent place with the great vibes and positive energy. Well, that's UBC campus. I call you be cool oh yes <laughs> because yeah. it does indeed have really really good energy and i personally yeah. like my son would say hang out there a lot because of the positive vibrations there's wonderful uh, places to meditate etc so yes it's a very good place to be and study my son went to school there too yeah, and sister, you're recommending probiotics and daily prior to bedtime, you know. Yes, uh, absolutely, because, I yeah. mean, you know, everything is connected, the intestinal system and the neuromechanics and the brain, et cetera. Yeah, I like personally take them every every evening after dinner. I, I eat early. Yeah. And it does help because, of course, everything is connected, holistically speaking, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Sister Shilpa's question is, could you please go deeper into uh, how you can turn negative memories into neutral or positive uh, through meditation to clean the subconscious? Yeah, it's a process. It's a, uh, you know, meditation. When, uh, when you have a, uh, when you learn how to meditate, this process starts day number one. It's not like you meditated, you have meditated after certain times and then you see the, begin to see the effect. Your, uh, the changes begin to happen. So the deeper aspect of what is meditation is first knowing who you are, your soul separate from the body. Uh, that's the, the, the lesson number one of the spirituality. I am a soul in this body. That realization itself is a powerful tool towards the meditation. Then second is, who do I connect with? So first is realization, I'm a soul. That means connecting with myself. Second is connecting with the, 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 the source, the power from where I can regain energy. And knowing that power, so knowing myself, knowing who I do go to, to gain the energy. And then I connect with that one. And uh, through this connection, uh, there's something called as energetic contact. As a soul, I can connect with a pure soul. And then uh, the interaction between either soul and that soul, it happens. And through this interaction, uh, I receive if that soul is powerful. I receive if that soul is, uh, is uh, happier than me. I can give out to the other soul what I have more. I can take from the other soul what they have more. So that's the process. And for that, we have to match our reality with that one. So. Well, meditation is connection of the soul and the supreme soul. So you become like a supreme soul. You become subtle. You let your uh, ego identity of who I am, let it go. I'm not this body. I'm not this relations. I'm not uh, 
this mind also. And then with that awareness, when you connect, you really begin to receive uh, from this higher power. And then uh, that, that transform, begin to transform your subconscious and it injects happiness in you. And that happiness just pulls you more and more and elevates you actually. And so one uh, suggestion for sister, I don't know what uh, your practices have been. I think uh, I heard yoga nidra from one of the sisters. But anyways, if you are not aware of, uh, you can, you can uh, learn to meditate through Brahma Kumaris, uh, who I am student of. Uh, all this knowledge uh, has come through this, I call it university uh, from where I learned. So you can uh, probably write your email. We can give you uh, some uh, places where you can uh, join. But I think the way you mentioned your uh, uh, the the you you mentioned that uh, you are traveling, so I think you probably already are doing some meditation. Uh, so whatever you're doing, you just uh, I think you can just fine tune that. Thank All you. Right. Okay. Uh, then uh, I have one more chat uh, dealing with some very disturbing energies. Oh, this is the our sister from Canada. Okay, so I think that covers it. Any uh, thoughts? Any questions? Any? Insights. Maybe no by this is for I I sent a chat, maybe you didn't see it. Okay. Um, the question is about when we have contrived cha time changes like we just had, it really throws off the whole rhythm of the body. Um, and the second one is in the summer when the light is um especially the northern more um parts you go in the world during the summer and then in the winter, vice versa. It's light so much of the day and even into 9.30 when we should be asleep, it's still light. So the body gets the signal to stay awake because it's still light. <laughs> so what are your comments on that? Any thoughts? Yeah, so making use of what is called as a power nap is what I would do, a power nap. I did not touch that. Uh, but power nap is something that uh, is a very useful tool. And this is what a lot of people do who do the night work, you know, who do the night job and then uh, they come back or somebody traveling through the train and then they, they feel tired. So taking a nap in the daytime is very important because that's, uh, you can quickly go from, uh, you know, being awake to light sleep, deep, deep stage of sleep very quickly, quick succession. And you can remain in that deep sleep because you, you are catching your first cycle. When you take a power nap, you are essentially going into the first cycle. So you have a chunk, you catch the chunk of the deep sleep and not much of a dream. And so you can with it very quickly, that 30, 40 minutes of a power nap can give you energy equal to I would say four, five, six hours. So you, you do one power nap day number one and day number two, two power naps, I think you will be back, you will be normal where you are, uh, avoiding the jet lag or something. So. <laughs> there are many more things that, uh, you know, we can talk about sleep, but it's sleep time. <laughs> I thought it was a really interesting. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate how you tied in, you know, the mechanics of the brain, as well as understand the importance of the different phases of sleep and how it correlates 
with our disposition, how we feel, um, and then how meditation can also help us. So um, I look forward to looking at that uh, again. Um, we will have this recording available on our YouTube channel, so you can tune in and uh, revise. And then also for those of you who wanted to take the course, we will be starting it on the 27th, uh, two days a week, uh, Monday and Wednesday. So we'll have that information. It's on the website, uh, onabutiretreatcenter.org. And if you wanted to take that class, and those of you who might be in Marin County, we will be having uh, meditation classes in person. So you can um, come in April, we will be starting a, a, a course. So that's it for announcements. And we look forward to, to your uh, you know, talk on diet. So that will be next Tuesday. So that will be very interesting um, and how that works for the body, mind, and soul. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vino. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. Good thank you so much. Thank you so much. Welcome back, Eben. Eben, welcome back. Thank you. <laughs>